While Ukraine is waiting for permission from the United States to launch long-range missiles against Russia, Ukrainian developers are not sitting idle but have begun to produce their own long-range weapons. First, there were domestic long-range kamikaze drones. There are actually quite a few of them, but one of the best at the moment is a drone called Lutyi. It is this kamikaze drone that started a rather successful series of destruction of Russian oil depots and refineries this year. According to the BBC, Ukrainian drones have targeted oil refineries and infrastructure not only in Russia, but also in occupied Crimea and Luhansk. Since the beginning of 2024, the Ukrainian armed forces have attacked enemy oil targets at least 64 times. A fire at an oil depot in the Proletarsko Rostov region, which broke out after a Ukrainian drone strike, took 16 days to extinguish. Emergency Situations Ministry aircraft, special trains, and more than 500 firefighters were involved in the firefighting, and the fire area at the tank farm reached 10,000 square meters. According to the American edition of CNN, the Ukrainian kamikaze drone Liuti weighs up to 300 kilograms and has a warhead weight of 75 kilograms, of which 50 kilograms is explosives. The drone's wingspan is 6 meters 70 centimeters and its length is 4 meters 40 centimeters. The maximum distance to the target it can cover is 1,000 kilometers. Thanks to artificial intelligence, the drone can navigate the terrain and avoid obstacles, meaning that it can change its flight direction in real time by comparing the real situation with the map stored in the system. In the same way, artificial intelligence is used to determine the target to be struck. The Kamikaze drone is powered by a German gasoline engine with a capacity of 50 horsepower. Usually, the disadvantage of such drones is their low speed, about 150 km per hour, but this also has its advantages. Thanks to its low fuel consumption, it can fly a longer distance. In August of this year, it was first reported that the first Ukrainian jet missile drone, called Palyanitsia, had been manufactured, and later, it was reported that the first Ukrainian ballistic missile had been manufactured. I will talk about this in detail in this video. Palyanitsia is a long-range Ukrainian-made jet missile drone. It seems that the developers, when choosing the name, decided to make fun of Russians who can't pronounce the word Palyanitsia and think it's a berry, i.e. they're strawberries, when in fact, it's a type of Ukrainian bread. The new long-range drone missile Palyanitsia was developed by Ukrainian specialists in the shortest possible time to create a response to Russia's constant missile attacks. In total, the development took a year and a half, which is quite fast in a large-scale war. The drone is equipped with a turbojet engine and is launched from a special ground installation. It can reach about 20 airfields in Russia. The most remote airfields are Saltsy, Savaslaka, and Engels II. This suggests that the maximum range of the Palyanitsia could be 750 kilometers. We can assume this because no such information has been officially disclosed at the moment. As the armed forces say, it will be a surprise for the enemy. In addition to airfields, Ukraine can also strike Russian military units, oil refineries, oil storage bases, and stationary radar complexes. At the end of this summer, the drone already managed to hit targets in the Russian-occupied territory of Ukraine, and in the fall of this year, for the first time, the Palyanitsia was used to hit targets in Russia. They have even managed to show off a downed Ukrainian drone in the swamps by posting photos on the internet. According to the occupiers, the drone was shot down on September 20th near the village of Kolodna, located in the Kursk region, which is about 100 kilometers from the border with Ukraine and 75 kilometers from the front line. The wreckage of the drone was heavily damaged, and at the time of publication, Russian sources did not report finding any markings. According to experts, the shape of the downed drone's wing is not the same as that of the Palyanitsia. Therefore, they assumed that the published photos depicted another jet-powered drone used by the Ukrainian armed forces, namely a British long-range drone called the Bench Jet 80. However, this drone is equipped with two jet engines, and the photo shows only one, but it is also possible that the second engine broke off during the downing and landed somewhere else. 
Ukraine's Palyanitsia jet missile drone has a classic aerodynamic shape with rudders at the tail and wings in front. The weight of the warhead is not specified, although some sources say it is about 100 kilograms. The speed of the Palyanitsia drone can be 450 to 500 kilometers per hour. Speed is the main advantage of jet drones, as they are difficult or even impossible to shoot down with anti-aircraft artillery, machine guns, or helicopters. To combat Ukrainian drones, Russia relies to some extent on helicopters, which have a maximum speed of up to 300 km per hour. And while this speed is enough to shoot down a conventional drone, a helicopter cannot catch up with a jet flying at 500 km per hour. Higher speeds also increase the chances of hitting more pieces of equipment. For example, if there is a jet drone attack on a Russian airfield, the enemy's reaction time is reduced and they are unable to move all the aircraft to safety, so more of them can be destroyed or damaged. Better speed also means less time for the drone to stay in the air defense zone, which increases the chances of an air defense breakthrough. The main disadvantage of jet drones is their cost, as jet drones are more expensive than their internal combustion engine counterparts. Their cost is increased by the jet engine itself, application purposes, and loads. A drone with a speed of 100 km per hour can be assembled from plastic water pipes or plywood, and it will fly. But a jet drone with a speed of 500 km per hour requires better and more expensive materials. Therefore, to increase the probability of hitting the target, the drone has a satellite and backup guidance system in case the satellite signal is jammed. Ukraine's Palyanitsia is not a novelty. Jet drones exist in other countries as well. For example, the British Bench Jet 80 drone I mentioned earlier in this video, which is also already being used by the Ukrainian armed forces to engage enemy targets, was developed in the 1980s, initially as an air target for training the British Navy. Now it is used as a kamikaze drone. The basic version can reach speeds of over 600 km per hour and stay in the air for up to 45 minutes. The advanced version, the Bench Jet 80 Plus, has a top speed of 720 km per hour. Also, Russia's ally Iran has kamikaze drones called Shahed 238. They have already managed not only to produce, but even transfer several of these drones to Russia. In February of this year, the Ukrainian Defense Forces landed one Iranian Shahed jet. Despite sanctions, Iran has access to a number of Western-made components. For example, the engine that enables the Shahed 238 to reach a top speed of 520 km per hour is made in the Czech Republic. To receive satellite navigation signals, the Iranian drone uses a block of four antennas from the Canadian company Talisman. A number of micro-circuits manufactured in Switzerland and the United States were also found in the downed Shahed. Thus, the Iranian Shahed 238 is assembled from foreign components available on the civilian market. At the same time, the way such parts as jet engines from the Czech Republic got to Tehran is quite interesting, so it needs to be investigated and made sure that it does not happen again in the future. On August 27th this year, the Ukrainian media reported on the successful test of the first Ukrainian ballistic missile. This is an achievement of the defense industry that can significantly affect the course of the war. It is worth noting that the armed forces of Ukraine already have ballistic missiles in service. The old Soviet Tochka-U systems, which have a range of only 120 kilometers and a very limited number of missiles, and the S-200 air defense systems, which remained in Ukraine after the collapse of the USSR. According to British intelligence, the anti-aircraft missiles of these systems have been redesigned and the Ukrainian armed forces use them as ballistic missiles to destroy ground targets rather than air targets. The Ukrainian armed forces also use American ATAS EMS, which can reach 300 kilometers, but the White House stubbornly forbids Kiev to use them on Russian territory. Therefore, the creation of its own long-range ballistic missile has been a priority for the Ukrainian defense industry in recent years. In general, information about the production of such weapons is classified, but there are certain guesses, and this is lively discussed on Russian television. The Ukrainian leadership started thinking about creating its own ballistics in the early 2000s. At that time, it was announced that the Sapsan missile system was being developed, which was actually supposed to be an analogue of the Russian Iskander. 
The Ukrainian system was also supposed to have a maximum range of 500 kilometers and a warhead weighing about half a ton. The project was scheduled to be completed in 2012, but lack of funding pushed back the deadline. And then in 2013, under President Viktor Yanukovych, any work on the project was halted altogether. In 2016, during the war with Russia, it became known that work on the Sapsan missile system, exported as Grom-2, had resumed. Ukraine launched the project at the request of Saudi Arabia. In February 2021, it became known that the Sapsan was 70% complete, and the last step was to finalize the first sample of this newest weapon. The battery of the complex should consist of two launchers, a charging machine, and two control machines at the division and battery levels. After the outbreak of full-scale war, official information about Ukraine's missile program became even less available. In addition, in the fall of 2022, law enforcement officers detained an employee of the Pivden Design Bureau on suspicion of espionage. According to investigators, she passed information about the production of the Sapsan system to Russian special services. According to the traitor, as of the summer of 2022, this missile system was already at the stage of readiness. And in August 2024, after successful tests, it became known that Ukraine was developing three modifications of the Sapsan, although again, there is no information on how they will differ at the moment. Most likely, it will be a ballistic, anti-ship, and anti-aircraft version. It turns out that it took about 11 years from the project's cancellation to the first successful test of a Ukrainian ballistic missile. However, it should be emphasized that it is too early to say how successful this development is in combat. If the Ukrainian ballistic missile proves to be fast, powerful, and accurate enough, even Moscow may be at risk. Let me remind you that the distance from the Russian capital to the Ukrainian border is approximately 460 kilometers, unlike the cruise missile called Palyanitsya, about which little is known, but at least the range, speed, and launch system. Almost nothing is known about the ballistic missile. If this new missile is of the operational tactical class, like Tochka U or ATAC MS, and if Ukraine is able to produce it together with cruise missiles, their joint use will greatly complicate the situation for the air defense of the Russian invaders, because a combined attack of several different weapons is very difficult to repel. In addition, no one will be able to prohibit the use of these weapons against targets in Russia, as they are Ukrainian made, and no one needs to ask permission. This means that the number of destroyed military targets in Russia will increase. Thank you to everyone who watched the video to the very end. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest developments. This video was produced by Hustler. See you soon.